절절 하는 법을 하게 됩니다. 얼고 Okay, and we are live. Uh, at least I hope we are live. So if people can give me something in the uh, what is it chat to see if the sound is good, yes or no, that would be nice. As you can see, today's format is very, very different. So I'm. No comments yet. Is there sound or is there no sound? As always, that is the question. Hi, you are live. Okay, I'm live. Okay, so as you can see, today's stream is going to be different from what you're used to. I'm not in the gym. Actually, I'm just in my um, bedroom talking into my computer and you see a stream. Um, today, I want to like talk with you and the, the talk will mostly be determined by what you people say in the chat. So if you're um, watching this and you can open the chat box, then please let yourself be heard. That would be nice. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about the uh, the history of Hangido. 
the history of martial arts in, in, in well, no, no, not in general. So I'm not going all over the history of, of all martial arts. Uh, the principles of Hangido, of course, uh, the development of Hangido, uh, my vision on Hapkido, Hangido. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a open conversation. So, <laughs> ooh, exciting, I would say. Um, okay, so let me start about the the, the principles of, of Hangido. As most people will know is that there are three main principles. It's the circle, flow, and harmony. And that should be in your screen right now. Circle, flow, harmony. Uh, in the past few weeks, we've done quite a couple of, uh, what is it, like videos. We've talked about these principles, we've shown techniques and how we apply those principles. So today a little bit about the, the theory of those principles. Before uh, I'll, I'll do any more talking, let's look at a old video. If you want to, you can also later look it up on, uh, on YouTube. So it's a, uh, let me see, click, 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 click. It's an old video of Myung Jae Nam Kuk's name. I believe it was shot in 1989 in uh, Master Kobe Jung's uh, first gym. It was located in the Juan area of Incheon. And uh, well, let's just look at the video, will we? So here we go. quite energetic and in this video it's, it's part of, of a much bigger video uh, it shows a lot of variations on techniques that we are familiar with come about coming by this is the not a lot of people will be familiar with In this, in this video, if you watch the whole video, there is like a lot of experimenting with, with techniques. You can clearly just see how he's like finding a way. And he's also showing some more basic techniques. Here you see a lot more. So and what, what especially is quite clear, but there's like a lot, a lot of flow in, in these techniques. You know, there's like almost no point where he or his opponent is like standing still and like we said earlier in videos hey, you know we start out big and then slowly the motions become smaller well you can see here he's in that circle the smaller circle and maneuvering in a, a much smaller um, like area than we usually do uh, in the beginning. So when I uh, came across this this video, I, I got the video cassette from Master Kobe Young. It was really really awesome. You know, like I think the whole video is about an hour or so, and I could watch this video over and over and over uh, again. Not that I would try to like mimic anything that's there because Master Kobe always told me like just trying to mimic motions doesn't make a lot of sense but like i said you can see a very good flow in these uh, techniques which i think is is awesome to uh, to see um so flow is very important um, but of course all, all three principles uh, are important we usually or i usually translate them a little bit differently and let me type that for you. So, and I think people are familiar with it. I call it the ABC. So here it is. It's the 
A, B, C. Avoid is, of course, you should try to avoid being attacked, being like where it's necessary for you to defend uh, yourself. And then uh, the avoid part, I usually, I split it up in, in what I call like the triple A. So the three A's, it is, you have to be aware, then you have to be alert, and then you need action. So awareness is of course like, just know where you are, whom you're with, um, like what kind of things are around you, what time of day uh, is it, stuff like that. Like if, if you've read in the park, or if you've read in the newspaper, oh, in that park, like there's like a, the, 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 maybe like a gang is active there, you know, and there's like constant trouble, 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 trouble. And then at nighttime, you're like on your way and you have to pass through the park. You can think by yourself, hmm, is it really necessary that I go straight to the park now? Or they, do I take a five minute detour? just to get around okay so and then you're like aware of your situation if you sit down somewhere you know just look around not just like for self-defense concerns but even for stuff like like regular safety you know like hey the building where i am now is it a, <laughs> a good sound construction you know am i safe here again avoid trouble uh, so that's the awareness. But awareness is not the same as paranoid. You know, you know, don't have to be paranoid uh, all the time. Uh, like after awareness, so let's say now you're actually walking in a street and you weren't aware of any trouble, but a trouble you think trouble is coming at you. This is when you have to be alert. Okay, like suddenly two guys are approaching you. You see them like talking to each other or pointing at you and you think, hmm, you know, or this guy is coming up and you know you've been in trouble with him before. Okay, be alert. It usually means also like alert if your hands go up. Not, don't have to be go up or like this, but go up or up, you know, like if you give yourself like a closed position like this, it tells other people, hey, stay away. I don't want any trouble. And probably you don't want any trouble so this is a good a good position um the alert and uh with avoid comes safe distance we've talked about safe distance a lot like if you're two arm lengths away from each other you know that's safe distance so alertness or sorry awareness is something that plays like out of the boundaries of safe distance. It, awareness can be something like this, like a hundred meters away. Alert is when people start to approach your safe distance. As soon as they're like on the safe distance line and you still don't have your hands up, you'll get in trouble. And by the time they are in your safe distance, your hands should definitely be up. Um, and it's not just like physically up, you know, your guard should also mentally go up like i said like if, if i do this this gives off a closed uh, position like look i don't want anything instead of like like this no you know you want to close yourself off um you can engage in conversation so you can start talking say hey hey guys what's going up um it's also about like keeping their brain occupied. If you ask them, if you like someone wants to want something from you, if you ask them a question, their brain has no other choice than to think about a hey, what am I going to answer. So, um, fighting self defense is not just something physical; it's definitely something like that's like mentally, uh, like mental as well. Uh, if that like you're uh, aware, you were alert. Uh, now actually the attack is coming so now you need action yeah, you need to move you 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 prefer prefer if you take the initiative you know that's the best thing uh action maybe even aggression but not uncontrolled aggression like rah, don't go berserker no but hey you definitely like a sound level of aggression there uh and like we talked about safe distance 
you want to have like the advantage there's another a of a good position so you always try to get the best position and when that um, is going on you want to keep your balance you want to break the balance of the other person so there's the b so we had the a now it's to b yeah break the balance of your opponent of course then you have to know what is balance and also we talked about this a lot i usually explain it with the lines you got your your center line and your hip line and of course the base at your feet comes first then you need to um what is it like usually like like sink a little a little bit uh, how can you mentally unbalance uh, someone it's um, by things that you say it's by things that you that you do so let me give like a very like like an example uh, let's say someone's coming up to you and usually you know like they have this uh, notion of oh i can have this guy especially if they're like like let's say like like the robber kind of people people who want they pick their victim so that means that they are already that they come prepared and they've picked you as a victim so the best like you should like tilt over their mind is where suddenly they feel the victim so it could be a, a preemptive strike could be a uh, a mental unbalance somewhere then of course it, it becomes a physical action as well but they don't expect the counter-attack they maybe expect like a meek person goes like ah oh, i don't do anything and then by showing look i'm not that meek person you know they're like oh what what's going on I, usually in my classes i give the example when i was younger so let's say between like 18 21 or something nighttime you're going to a, a club or a bar or a pub and you always had the the kind of people their saturday night is ruined if they don't get in a fight so and every saturday night they go looking for a fight so they 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 come prepared because they know they want to fight they've got a lot of experience they already hype themselves up like oh i'm going to kick or punch somebody you're at the dance floor you just met this very nice girl so you are in this state of euphoria oh you know i'm having the time of my life and then suddenly that guy starts picking on you you know so he's got the the upper hand at that point and you definitely didn't come prepared probably because you weren't aware you know you were just focusing on the girl instead of everything uh, around you so then by either saying something or uh, even just like asking questions like i said like asking questions and that way you make sure that suddenly oh he has to think about something as uh, well there's like okay I, I don't want to come up with something like oh you should say this and that that happens because that is not true you know <laughs> it's it's always different maybe uh, this takes practice as well um the best fight is the fight avoided yeah sure but it means sometimes you don't have the uh, the chance to uh, to avoid so um physically unbalancing mentally unbalancing equally important usually when you take the the physical unbalance if you unbalance the body the the mind also goes like oh my god what's happening to me i'm falling so um there's that so after you've taken the balance now you can you can take control if, if you didn't break the balance yeah physically or mentally it's hard if not impossible to actually control somebody i also put counter there because sometimes people think oh i can just hit someone but i would say look first if you first unbalance somebody and then hit him it the success rate of the technique goes up something else that i would like to talk about you've got like certain techniques that have like a certain success rates so uh punching and kicking they have a high success rate in the sense that if we decide to go fighting yeah and it will just be let's say just boxing uh oh you will hit me i will hit you 
and it becomes more like something of endurance if we're like technically um, at like the same level. Uh, so the success rate oh is quite high, but it's not like every boxing match ends in a KO after five seconds. No, sometimes they take like 10, 12, I don't know how many rounds. So although a lot of punches are exchanged, it doesn't automatically lead to a, uh, a KO. Where, let's say if we take something like a finger lock, which is very difficult to do, you know, if we're standing in distance too, and I'm going, oh, I'm going to take his finger and then lock him. That That's something very hard to accomplish. But if I have the <laughs> the finger, you know, then ah, it actually usually it's like a showstopper for the other person because of the of the pain. So the uh, but getting there is quite difficult. So there's like this axis, like where do you want? And what we usually see is that uh, grappling techniques, throwing, they have a, a somewhat lower success rate than punching. But if you know how to manage the distance and get close. It's actually a, it's like the, the ultimate spot in between, you know, it's like it ha it's, it's not too, diff not too difficult. But, and the uh, payoff is quite high. So there's where you, uh, you gain. But of course, if, if, if I can apply a, a neck lock or a, a wrist lock to someone, then the payoff is like almost immediately where just punching and kicking, it takes a long time with added uh, risk for myself where, oh, you know, <laughs> he punches and kicks me uh, as well. I'm not just talking about physical fights. I'm also talking about mental fights. It's, it's both. If you can um, avoid the fight just by talking, that's, that's excellent, you know, like even if you're like in the alert or in the action phase and you can still manage with your talking, uh, with your words, you know, to like still avoid uh, the confrontation, of course, that's best. Again, I mean, <laughs> well, what, what some fights are never, never just physical, you know, there's always a emotional, um, part of it that that is involved you know I, of course like okay well, i i've in my life i've sometimes i've i've seen like fights you know like where you go to a evening where there's like a, let's say a, a few kickbox bounce or something and it's always funny to see like it's in the netherlands it goes like the, you've got like the c level the b level and the a level guys so you see the young kids c level they've got little to no experience it's their first fight they get in the ring they get punched in the face by the other guy they uh, and like you see the emotion is like huge you know like technique goes down <laughs> the drain there's no technique anymore it's just like a, it's a a lot of emotion then when you see the a-level guys you see a lot of technique and you see like almost no emotion you know because those guys have experience they do this all the time um after they, 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 they like the, their fight has ended, they are still able to shake hands. And of course, for them, it's just uh, a game. But I would say even for them, at least during the fight, there is a emotional contact. It, even if it's like, let's say it's like, like artificial aggression, they have to pump themselves up for, uh, for a fight. So there's always, it's, it's never just physical. There's always an emotional uh, thing to the uh, to the fights. Okay, let's look at another video. Let me see what did I have. Oh, this one. I I don't think a lot of people have ever seen this this video. It's from uh, 1992. It's Master Kobit Young's uh, second visit to the Netherlands. The first time he visited together with Kuxenim, and then um, or in 1992 he was invited by what was then like the let's say the Dutch. HKD Federation. He was staying, I, I believe, in Leon's house, and they made a video of him doing a, a, a lot of the techniques, probably for future reference. Although I think they never really uh, <laughs> used it, so I, I think we've got something unique here for most people. Let's have a look. So it's like Master Go doing technique one till twelve with with Leon.
Hey, well, like I said, it was an interesting video to look at. Actually, now, now I just realized that Natsuko in this video is younger than, than I currently uh, am. Again here, so the video is three years uh, after the, the, the previous video that we looked at. It's, it's the, um, like smaller circles. What you usually see or what I think is that Kuxin was much more... Uh, a much better like per performer than then master co uh was he showed a lot more in uh you know like when, when he did a um what is it like a demonstration you could really look like ah oh, this is so so cool you know it's like almost like uh, movie magic that that you're seeing where usually master co was a lot more uh practical in what he did and for us, it was lucky that Masuko, at least to some extent, spoke English. So he was actually able to uh, explain to us <laughs> what, what what he meant. Of course, Kuxinim could explain it as well, but just in Korean. And uh, I didn't speak any Korean at that time. Um, I think Leon must have been about like 20 in, in that video. And then Masuko probably like 43 or, uh, or something. Um... It was for us. It was like the real, the real first introduction to Han Guido. Of course, uh, Young Jenam and Colbert Young had been here in in eighty nine, and we had seen some of the stuff. But for most of us, it was like way above our head. So we just continued doing the old things that 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 we were used uh, to. And then I think it was in 91, Leon went to, to Korea for six weeks or something. And he came back. So, oh, I've got this awesome stuff. But he had been to Korea just for six weeks. So, <laughs> although he had good skill, you know, and not by far. So, we had like a bit difficulty. Like, what do you want? You know, and then in 92, uh, Master Kovac Young came together with his friend Master Lee. And then we were like, Ah, so that is what you were talking about all this time. Oh, this is actually kind of awesome. <laughs> and that's when we started practicing Hangido a, a lot more than we did previously. And over the years, like let's say the traditional Hapkido that we had learned kind of faded away and it became almost like pure Hangido that we were uh, that we were doing. Um and so and then now I, I would like to talk about the, the control counter a little bit more. Like I said, if even if you counter, you probably want to take the balance first. For, if you look at, at boxing matches, when does usually does a knockout happen? It's when the other person slips a little bit, you know, like ducks, like uh, his balance is gone. Then when he gets hit on the face, like physically strong, sound people, they can take a few punches, even in the head. Well, I mean, don't ask me to like take a punch from Mike Tyson, but you know, like at a certain level, people of uh, like certain uh, ability, certain body types, they can usually take a few punches of each other. If the balance is gone, then you punch. The uh, the chances of, of getting KO'd are uh, a big, uh, much better. You, we usually we go more for control, yeah. So we want to control the other person. And of course, in in recent years, we've seen this um, become even more. How to say that? Um, like like with with the, with the the coming of of MMA and stuff like uh, BJJ. You know, like the submission, the control. Um, many people have seen. Hey, that's a, a much better way to go than just exchanging punches all the all the time then, then the next thing i would like to talk so we usually talk about uh so the abc equally important is what i call 
is the uh, what is it uh, speed power and technique so let me type that out for you speed power technique okay, so uh, of course if you're extremely fast then there's no reason why you should um, well maybe not win a fight but why you should lose a fight like uh, not winning is not the same as losing like Hussein Bolt will doesn't have to lose a fight to anyone because he's out of there very fast so uh, but also like if you have speed of course like if you can punch really fast or if you can kick really fast that definitely helps um, but what, when we are talking about speed, we usually what we talk about is is timing. It doesn't mean is that we don't want or that we don't train to hit fast or kick fast or do techniques fast. But um, just being fast is not enough. If you have better timing, if you're in the right spot at the, at the right time, then you don't have to get there fast. Just be there on time. Something equal is like with power. You know? You don't mean oh I'm physically the strongest guy. Although like if you're physically very strong, there's not a real reason why you should like lose to someone who's uh, like weaker than you are because you should be able to just grab him up and put him down. Uh, but if, if if you have no physical strength whatsoever, it's going to get very difficult. So it's it's not just about power. It's also about a certain level of fitness that you that you need. Again, let me take the example of, of boxing. Uh, in a boxing match, it's also a battle of endurance. You know, you have to last all those rounds. If you get in a real fight, then, you know, <laughs> you can say, oh, 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 I'm tired, I give up. You know, that that's the point where you lose. So you better make sure that you've got a bit of a physical uh, condition as well. So... Get that in order. Start walking, right, Jose? Uh, so of course, and but we usually, when we talk about power, it's again, it's not too much just physical power. Although you need the fitness and everything, it's like how do I use my body in the optimum way? Like if I just uh, punch with my arms, or do I use my hips? Do I generate power with my whole body, or just with one group of of muscles? And then comes the technique part, and Technique is, is the only thing in your life that can go up all the time. You know, you can keep improving your technique. Depending on it, like if you say, oh, look, my low spinning kick, like more like the acrobatic kind of techniques. Yeah, probably when you, <laughs> you know, get older, those will go down. But your, your regular self-defense, actually almost anything that happens in distance two and or like close distance two and one, you can improve it. Um, and then when you combine that like with experience, so where your timing gets better and where you learn how to use your body better, that builds up. As you get older, like your ability to run fast will definitely go down. Your power will reach its peak and go down. Your technique, you, it, nobody starts with technique here and goes this way, you know? Technique goes this, technique can maybe go this, so you don't want that. But nobody starts with this technique here and then ends up with bad technique. You know, your technique will always go up, especially <laughs> when you keep training and you should keep uh, training. I'm looking at you again, Jose. So um, rely more on technique and training your technique. And when you train your technique a lot, your physical condition will be okay as well and you will get the experience is where you know where to be at what uh, time and i think when we look at the the older videos of of cooks and Iman and master kobeck young sometimes when i say look they're um or at least the way they explained it back then actually you know i think now with the knowledge we have we have a we, we can explain it it better but of course they had lots and lots more experience and when you look at how they move and how can they make those smaller circles possible it's because of the experience they had their 
you know, like their timing was a lot, a lot better. So again, if you rewatch these videos, look them up on, on YouTube and you see how they move, when they move, even before something happens, it's, it's quite <laughs> wow. You know, just, just wow. Like, like I said, like, um, Mexico was about three years younger in the video than I am now, but, um, yeah, <laughs> wow, just, just, just wow, you know, I, I cannot compare myself to, to that skill level, uh, even when uh, the age is, uh, is the same, and even though I think, look, we can now explain things better, but that's also thanks to, to Masako, so just being able to explain it is not enough, we should still get on the mat and practice, 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 and of course, we all know is that was Master Ko's motto, practice every day, many practice can do uh, all these uh, these things. Now, let's have a look at another Kuksanin video. He's doing a demo and it was, uh, the video was made in in Korea, it was some kind of event where more Hapkido styles uh, did demonstrations and he's showing some of the one Lang de Bob that we're familiar with and then what i just talked about like like his like excellent timing the way how we how we enters many times it's it's remarkable so here we go yellow costume <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't have the sound of what he's saying now, but obviously he's doing a one who, And what we see in the later years that we don't see in the, uh, in the years before that is that Kuxim is also, like in his one time group, is like experience, uh, experimenting with the, the impact. So usually at first it's like, uh, like slow and then. Not sure if he shows it in this video, but in other videos it does look wrong. You can clearly see how he uh, experiments with, with impact uh, as well. And flow. And like, these kind of things are what I'm talking about when he demonstrates. There's much more like a wow level to it. That being said, sometimes people did get hurt in the demonstrations, but then later safety measures were <laughs> put in place to avoid that. If you just go on, on YouTube and you type in Hangido, you will find this video quite fast. So here you see much more of the the impact. And then the guys go to the side. Kuxim is often been described as being a martial arts genius and I've had the pleasure of uh, like training with him a few times, most notably in 1997 when we were staying in Korea and then in the morning time uh, he would practice with us. And some of those techniques I can still, <laughs> what is it, remember quite vividly. Okay, so, but, but, but what I do think in, in this video, what you see sometimes, there is actually, is a little bit like maybe overpowering, but when he goes much more for the flow, the technique only doesn't look a lot better. It also seems to work uh, a lot better. And, and in my experience, when, when I like was 
had the chance to grab cooks on him and he was doing technique with me i was amazed by how soft his techniques were like even how soft it felt just to to attack him as if you're like walking into a void and then suddenly you're you're on the floor somewhere that was a, an, an awesome experience but it's all the it's only possible if everything before that is is good so uh, I, I think of course technique is is very important but i think probably the second thing important is the speed part and then especially the timing you know like if you can time your technique uh, if you can like enter at the same time if you can get out of the same time it's uh, at, at the right time that's uh, that's actually what you uh, what you need so uh, speed power technique um, but they are like things that you need to get the understanding of circle flow and harmony but it's a they work together as you practice as your technique goes up your like understanding of circle flow and harmony go up but it's not an understanding just like like here like now that i talk about it and let's say you've never done hangido you probably understand my words but understanding it here is not the same as understanding it there the only way you can understand it here is through practice 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 and uh well again like that's my scope is like oh repeat 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 don't take a lot of techniques and practice them every time just to keep yourself interested because oh, i want to add something new oh, i want something new i want something new because then you have no focus now take a few techniques yeah, that teach you the core principles focus on those few techniques practice them a lot and diligently and then you will grow in your in your understanding of, of hangido and only through a lot of practice can you uh, can you do that so that brings me to the the last video i brought today it's of master ko in 1995 and he is um uh, practicing with a, a student of, of his who was a, a teacher at that time in the uh, in the gym in Sangbuguan, uh, Joe Junte. Unfortunately, he quit his Hapkido career, but was also a remarkable guy. Uh, and when I got this video from my friend who, who shot it in 1995, I think I must have watched this video a thousand times at least, you know, like, <laughs> again, wow. But... Uh, you see a much softer Hangido, although you sometimes you see Masako really like experimenting, like, oh, how can I do this? How does this flow? But really, you, you see him like searching for flow, but I think you see like a very soft Hangido that has for me been like something to aim for for a long, long time. And still, I, mean, I, I still enjoy watching this video. So let's watch it together. That's not that soft. On the right, you can see a very young yellow post. I think he was about 12 back then. He did walk in the back. Probably his favorite technique. Okay. Leon standing there. Oh. 
fireman scary. Also a very good falling by Joe Ginte, by the way. <laughs> and I think number eight must have been Masako's other favorite technique. He had quite a few variations of that technique, so it's uh, seven. Oh! Again, very nice. Why? 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 No catch, come on, practice all. Uh, Jos asked a question about uh, on the pause in a, in a technique. Um, what we often, it's, I think it's not, okay, sometimes we see a pause is where people, when, when you don't make your circle correct, is where the technique actually pauses. So that's something that we should definitely avoid. But you have these, um, Things in the technique is where you like make your step, you're guiding your uh, opponent, but there's like a little moment is where you seem to do like almost almost nothing. Then the, the opponent just goes that way and then you can say, oh, look, he's going this way. Okay, and I have to pick it up uh, again. You've got these moments in the technique when you're doing the technique right is where you seem to be like in control of, of the universe, so to, <laughs> to say. Not really, but it, it, it might feel like that. So then you make your step, you make your turn. The opponent is still going. Okay, and it's like, and it will be split seconds. Yeah, and then you go, okay, go and go again. So there's like two times of, there's like the bad pauses. That's where your technique goes like one, two, three, four. So that's the pause that you should definitely uh, avoid. And there is the, the good pauses where you kind of pause, there's still something going, and then, okay, now you go again, uh, but the technique doesn't actually actually stop. I'm, I'm not sure if, if that is the pause that, that, that you are after. I sold like the, the, the bad kind of pause, I usually call it also it's like the, the, the patience point, is where uh, the, the technique goes wrong when people go too fast. That's another thing like, that I want to talk about when talking about uh, speed, power, and, and technique. When people lack technique, they usually try to just rush through. Oh, you know, like if I do it faster, it will be better. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. Or when they muscle through the technique, oh, it doesn't work. So instead of relying on the principle and everything, oh, you know, the, let's put a little bit more power uh, in there. Uh, so and when the technique is bad, Usually people, they don't use their hips quite well. So they just step, step, step. And then it sometimes means that they are running in front of the uh, opponent. So sometimes, uh, and again, that has to do with, with timing. Of course, you should avoid like being ahead of your opponent. You should uh, avoid being uh, late when, it, uh, when your opponent, like if your opponent punches and your block is late, your, uh, your block doesn't make a lot of sense. So uh, you should keep keep up, and when you get the control, then your opponent has to keep up with uh, with you. So that's something that you uh, that you should aim for. Um, yeah, I, I think that's that's it for today. Uh, I've got <laughs> many more things, maybe anecdotes that people want to. Look. Okay, a little bit about the the history of Hangido. I'm I'm not going to go in all the like years and stuff like that. Uh, I think it was around 83 
when it was clear to Cooks and Imyuk, I have to do something on my on my own. You know, if if I just go my own way, that's a lot better than staying involved with with other people. Uh, he obviously had a style that didn't match the the old Hapkido style anymore. So if if he wanted more development, he had to go on. And um, I've said this this week in one of our closed webinars as well. For a long time, he took like our number six, Mukama Bob. And of course, we know that that he had been involved in Aikido. Well, I think it's Irimi Nage in, 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 in Aikido. That for about a year, he just practiced that technique over and over again. But of course, he already had a, like a lot of experience and a lot of like background from other martial arts. So it was easy for them then to adopt and make newer techniques uh, as well. Eventually from that, he created 12 basic uh, techniques. But, you know, how are we going to like make this into a completer uh, system? For a, a, some time, <laughs> this is what Master Code was, he actually played with the idea, you know, like, how can I popularize this? Let's make Hangi Robics. So let's do something like that's fit and fun for the whole family and like it will get the ladies uh, coming to our gyms in their spandexes and do something like that. But the students, senior students, something like uh, 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 that, that's not going to happen. And they knew that he was also uh, like in his spare time doing dancing uh, as well with his wife. So they said, you know, like put some flow in that. That's something families can do uh, as well. The whole Wanzangu Bob ID is from what I heard came mostly from uh, Master Ko. We know that Master Ko was uh, very interested in Chinese martial arts, uh, Tai Chi, Bagua, Tsingi, uh, things like, like that. And he had seen a video of like a lot of Chinese people in their white uniforms just all doing their Tai Chi. And of course, Cook's name, we knew that he was like practicing in, in front of a mirror to uh, like train on his own. So like putting this in a form and then also with uh, Chigi Bob added to it, gave like a new pillar to the Hangido uh, curriculum. And it must have been around, I think 90 or something. So at, at, at that time, Cookson was like traveling the world a lot and he had put Master Ko in, in charge of the IHF headquarters as the being like the head instructor of the IHF. So there was like monthly practice sessions and Master Ko was actually in charge of, of teaching all the <laughs> the Korean masters and bringing them up to date to Han Gido as well. So it was in 86 when Cook Sanim came to the Netherlands the first time. It was at the invitation, he was touring Europe at the invitation of some Olympic committee. I know he's been to Austria back then and he had been to uh, to the Netherlands as well and uh, so in 89 he returned for one week with Master Co. Uh, so th that's um, when, when I first got to see them and of course for us that led into a very long relationship with uh, with Master Co. who then came in uh, what is 92 I know he's been there in 95 99 and after the year 2000, I think like on average, maybe almost every year he has been to the Netherlands and on average, at least one Dutch person has been to Korea as well for a long time. So that that's how for us, uh, Han Guido slowly but surely developed in, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, over the years, we've seen quite a few changes. I think uh, we have gotten more and more uh, a better understanding of of the principles uh, but I, we should be careful that oh you know like I said oh I understand the principle here so now I know what to do that's not true you know the even though our principle understanding here has grown it, it has to go here and it can only get here through practice so uh, Knowing how a thing works is not, <laughs> you know, uh, like, um, how to say this? I forgot the word. 
uh, <laughs> I'm here. So, um, you know, like you want to be able to do it uh, uh, as well and not just like be able to understand it. And the only way you can understand it is to practice. And even if you don't understand it here, but you practice a lot, you will g still get the understanding here. So you don't need the understanding here to get it there. Having the understanding here is not the same as having it here as well. So uh, let then the message be today only through practice, 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 can we actually become better. So we should better ourselves through continuous practice. And that will then be my uh, final say in this. Um, thank you all for watching. That's it for today. Next week, let's get a little bit more active again instead of me just sitting in a chair and talking to y'all. So uh, I wish you a pleasant weekend. Looking forward to seeing you again uh, Monday night for the ninth, yeah, ninth webinar we're doing on uh, Huntang the Bob. So there will be Chumpal to Bob. Uh, again, thanks a lot for watching. See you later. Oh, oh, oh.